Up on the housetop, reindeer paws. Out jumps good old Santa Claus. Wait a minute. Reindeer don't have paws, they have hooves. <laughs> Wonder what sort of genius wrote that song. <laughs> Season's greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. I hope all of you out there are having a wonderful holiday season. Uh, no matter which winter holiday you observe or how you choose to do so, whether it's spiritually or secularly, uh, my family and I go the, the, the secular route, uh, but uh, whichever way you uh, celebrate and in whichever holiday you celebrate, I hope that it's satisfying to your soul, I guess is the way I'm trying to put it. Uh, you know, we all have enough stress and aggravation and other crap the rest of the year that uh, everyone deserves, in my opinion, um, a season of warm fuzzies. You know, whether it's my ideal holiday, honestly, is just celebrating it, uh, being with the people that I love, the people that are important to me, uh, whether, you know, whether that be your family, your friends, you know, whoever it is that uh, means a lot to you and who you mean a lot to. Most of the time that's with your family. Uh, some people out there I know are not that lucky. Uh, I, I fortunately am, but uh, anyway, as I said, regardless of how you celebrate the holiday, or if you, even if you choose not to celebrate it, um, just, yeah, be good to yourself, uh, give yourself a little holiday cheer, uh, however that, in whatever form that might take. But anyway, on to the topic at hand for today's video. Uh, I've decided I want to start a new tradition on my channel, as, assuming you can start traditions. But uh, anyway, uh, it's going to be a special edition of my Now and Then segment. Uh, as you may or may not know, Now and Then is the feature on my channel that I do in which I talk about two uh, albums by the same artist. I review two albums by the same artist, one new or recent release and one from their past. But uh, my holiday version of Now and Then is going to differ in a couple of ways. Uh, the two albums are not going to be by the same artist, uh, except in the very rare instances when I might want to review an art, a particular artist's new holiday album and it's not their first, you know, and I may want to talk about also one of their previous holiday albums. But, you know, 99% of the time it's going to be two different artists' holiday albums. Uh, the other difference is that the Now album uh, may not necessarily be from the current year. Uh, I, I'm going to try and buy one new holiday album every year, and, uh, you know, ideally it will be one that I will find interesting enough to, well, to buy, first of all, but also to review on my channel. But I am fully expecting that uh, every so often there will be a year in which no holiday albums will thrill me. Uh, and I will review an album not from the current year, from a recent year, like one or two or three years previous. So, but anyway, uh, yes, there was one newly released holiday album this year that did uh, enchant me or captivate me enough that I wanted to talk about it on my channel. And, and yes, it is indeed what prompted me to launch this feature for uh, every holiday season on my channel. Uh, so, for now, let's talk about this uh, new holiday album. It is called Moonlight, Mistletoe, and You, it is, and it is Kebmo's first holiday album. So, yes, uh, you've heard me talk about Kebmo on, the, on this channel uh, this year recently. I've just this year gotten really into Kebmo uh, in a big way, and uh, yeah, I talked about his uh, most recent studio album. And this is actually his first holiday album, and uh, yet, partly because I got into Kebmo so much, as soon as I saw this, I just had to pick it up. And uh, it is a, an absolutely delightful mix of original tunes and covers. It's about 50 50. So there are 10 songs on the album, and about half of them are covers, and half of them are Kebmo origin originals. And this is actually very much a secular album, uh, which in a way kind of surprised me. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't think Kebmo is really heavily religious, but I think he is somewhat to a degree religious. But yeah, there are no, uh, no hymns or traditional carols on this album, and I honestly don't recall hearing any. Uh, religiously themed lyrics in any of the songs. So uh, hopefully that doesn't take away any of the enjoy enjoyment for you. Uh, it certainly didn't for me. But yeah, this is just a won wonderful, warm and cozy holiday album. Uh, every song on it could just kind of, for some reason, evokes the holiday spirit for me. I did just say a minute ago that there were no hymns or traditional carols, but uh, in one of the covers, uh, we'll talk about the cover side of things first, uh, there's a song on here called Merry Merry Christmas, which was originally done by a uh, rhythm and blues artist named Coco Taylor. And uh, that song actually does cleverly interpolate some uh, uh, instrumental passages from O Come All Ye Faithful and The Little Drummer Boy in various parts of the song. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, little audio 
Easter eggs, if you will, pardon the holiday pun, uh, for the listener to uh, to discover in that in the album. Um, and it, it just has one of the great things about that song, "Merry Merry Christmas," is it has an absolutely walloping breakdown in the middle that just kind of cranks the song to a whole new level. But uh, you know, it doesn't make it any less Christmassy. To an extent, blues songs don't really evoke Christmas as readily as you know any of the other more pop or or traditional carol type of stuff does. But anyway, uh, there are two other covers that uh, really have a classic blues sound to them. Uh, one of them is called Santa Claus, Santa Claus, in which Keb laments not being able to be with his girl at Christmas time. And also Santa Claus Blues is another one, in which he wishes he had money to make his girl's Christmas more special. So yes, very, very, very Christmassy lyrics, but you know, the tunes, as I said, blues songs don't usually evoke the Christmas spirit, but uh, basically they really tend to mix up, shake up the album a little bit, the, the sound of the album, uh, gives a little variety to it. Uh, and it, they also, also these songs really show off Keb's guitar chops. I mean, he's, he's, he's a mean guitar player, and uh, that really comes through in those songs. Uh, and there's another cover on here. It's uh, a cover of the Irving Berlin song, I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm. And that one features Melissa Manchester. It's just a very delightful and very jazzy duet. So yeah, that's another thing that kind of shake up, shakes up the album, aside from the blues songs. And then we have the original tunes on here, which are probably even more fantastic than the covers. Uh, the title track, Moonlight, Mistletoe, and You, that features Gerald Albright, and it's just a very, very nice R&B sounding ballad. And there's, yeah, you know, as, as I said, there are a few different sounds on this album that really shake it up, give it a variety of, of uh, moods and stuff. Uh, and the highlight of the album, and it's what would have made me buy the CD if I wasn't going to already because it's a Kebmo CD, is a song called Christmas is Annoying. Yeah, you, you've got to hear it. Uh, it uh, Actually, it laments how the magic of the holiday has been lost in the modern day commercialization of it. Uh, especially from your view of it as a child, in, uh, as it turns into your view of it as a grown-up. And it, it's meant to be tongue-in-cheek, and it, it's made to be funny. The lyrics are funny. You've got to listen to it uh, as soon as you're done watching this video. Kebmo, Christmas is Annoying. You've got to listen to that song. It's just, it's, it's just a real gem. It's turning into one of my favorite holiday tunes of all time, honestly. And as much as that song takes the cake for me, uh, probably the two uh, very close runners-up for the two most enjoyable songs on the album are the two closing tracks. Uh, the next to last one is called When the Children Sing, and it's actually co-written by Mac Davis, a country musician. And it talks about how the sound of a children's choir singing Christmas carols can just radiate the spirit of the season. Uh, and, and of course, a children's choir is part of the song naturally. I mean, it couldn't, it couldn't not be. And then the final track on the album, which was actually co-written by Beth Nielsen Chapman, is called One More Year With You, and that's a love song with, uh, as the title suggests, a, very, a New Year's kind of a theme to it. So that's just a very, very cute and uh, wonderful, heartwarming way to close a heartwarming album. I mean, honestly, you pretty much can't go wrong with this album. I mean, unless you have a an extreme predilection toward actual religious content in your music, uh, you know, you, you might miss out on that with this album, but honestly, I just absolutely love this album. It's it's one of my new favorite holiday albums. Kebmo, Moonlight, Mistletoe, and You. You've got to check it out. But that was now, and this is then, Mariah Carey's 1994 holiday album, Merry Christmas. Uh, yes, I just mentioned this one in my Backtrack segment last month. It celebrated its 25th anniversary. And yes, in the last 25 years, if you ask just about anybody, it's become a holiday classic. And But in very sharp contrast to Kebmo's holiday album, uh, this one actually has several traditional carols and uh, religious references in many of the lyrics, and even a relig religious-themed original tune, Jesus Born on Christmas Day, which the melody on that one is very nice, uh, but the lyrics, to me anyway, they come across as just, you know, a bunch of phrases that a preacher would use to make up his sermon. Which, I mean, I suppose since it has to do with the birth of Jesus, the lyrics are going to be pretty much, you know, narrowly focused on a you know, on one topic, so I guess that would kind of, you kind of couldn't avoid that in a way with a religious, uh, uh, an original t uh, Christmas song. So, you know, honestly, all things considered, it probably uh, is as much as it can be. But honestly, there are plenty of moments on this album that make up for that uh, arguably lackluster original Christmas song. Uh, for instance, Mariah actually covers one of my favorite traditional carols on this album, Oh Holy Night, and she does a fantastic job on it, and 
uh, for added measure, she actually hits one of her famous ridiculously high notes uh, near the end of the song, so that, that makes it a standout on this album for me. And she also does a very, very good job on the opening track, which is a rendition of Silent Night. And she does a very, very good medley of Hark the Herald Angels Sing and Gloria in Excelsi Steo, uh, which is a very, very good medley. Uh, but to me, that one is way overshadowed by Joy to the World. And that's actually a medley. I, I've been waiting for this. Well, I say I've been waiting for this, but I kind of, I pretty much ignored this album for 20 plus years, almost 25 years. So yeah, I've been waiting for it, but in a way it's been waiting for me. Um, finally, somebody did a cover of, uh, a medley of Joy to the World, the traditional carol, as well as the Three Dog Night song of the same name. And, you know, it's gotten bad reviews, but in my opinion, it's one of the standouts. It, those two songs go well together wonderfully, I think. And that, to me, this is, that's one of the highlights of this album, honestly. Uh, and there are some uh, non-religious covers as well. Santa Claus has come to town. Uh, this is a version of the, the rock-leaning rendition, which was uh, originally first recorded by the Crystals and made famous by Bruce Springsteen and probably a few others. And she also covers Christmas Baby Please Come Home, which was originally done by Darlene Love and produced by Phil Spector. And speaking of Phil Spector, you've been waiting for me to get to this one. Uh, it is the unquestionable centerpiece of this album, her smash hit, All I Want for Christmas Is You, which uh, actually just in the last couple of weeks, I think, finally reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And it was, yeah, it never got to number one because of some weird technicalities. Look up the Wikipedia article on it and you'll read about the technicalities that kept it from being number one on the Billboard Hot 100 until now. It's just very, very fascinating how the bureaucracies and that kind of thing work with the, the, the Billboard uh, singles list. But anyway, yes, it's a, it's a modern day holiday classic for a reason, that song, All I Want for Christmas is You. Uh, and it, it was not produced by Phil Spector, but it does a fantastic job of imitating the Phil Spector sound. It's just fantastic. It's, it's a wonderful song. And rounding out the Mariah Carey originals is a ballad, which is Miss You Most at Christmas Time. It's a very nice ballad. I'm not sure what else to say about it beyond that because it's it's pretty much dwarfed in uh, in fame and stature by all i want for christmas is you so but yeah all in all this was a very very enjoyable album i'm, I'm glad i picked it up uh it's i'm i'm kind of sorry i waited almost 25 years to pick it up uh, but in a way it was worth the wait uh, yes it all yes it took me almost 25 years to pick this album up go figure i mean hey remember it's me that's talking okay i've, I've got a nasty habit of waiting ridiculously long to pick up albums but yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, if I had to choose between the two, it's, this is just something I do for the videos. Uh, not that I would want to choose between the two, but I would have to go with uh, Kebmo's Moonlight Mistletoe and You, uh, just because it's not that the religious um, references in the lyrics and the traditional carols weigh it down at all, uh, make it any less enjoyable. It's just not being a religious person myself, the songs have less significance to me. So I, I tend to enjoy more enjoy the uh, original tunes. The songs that I really like the most, the Christmas songs that I like the most, holiday songs, are the ones that give you a nice snapshot of a wintertime setting, you know? Uh, not the Santa Claus or gifts and stuff uh, songs, or the traditional carols or the, the religious songs. It's, it's those, the winter songs are the ones that really uh, appeal to me the most, and so that goes a long way to explaining why Kev Moe's Mil Moonlight Mistletoe and You is my preferred of the two albums. Uh, you know, so again, only I would only choose one or the other if I only had the money to buy one of them, but of course I'm very, very happy to have added both of these to my holiday collection, my steadily growing holiday CD collection which uh, will afford me the opportunity to bring these uh, holiday versions of Now and Then to you every single year, and I'm going to enjoy doing that. So yes, that will do it for my inaugural holiday edition of Now and Then. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I hope you all are having a wonderful and happy holiday season, whichever holiday you choose to observe. I hope you're doing it in a way that is enriching to your soul. Uh, because I, you know, everybody, everybody deserves that, in my opinion. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. 
Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy holidays, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.